D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So you've probably already heard this news, but I figured, you know, I want to put my two cents in uh, just because it's DC news and I've covered this movie and stuff and and I just want to talk about it, you know. So, of course, you heard the news that Batgirl has been canceled. Um, I'm surprised by this. It's so crazy. We're going to go over this article to help me, you know, get all my uh, 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 thoughts out and stuff. But uh, I just want to say, like, I- I'm. I'm so surprised because this movie was like like 99% done. They just had to do like tweaks and stuff. And um and like it's and, and they they said 70 million but there was some stuff in here about how it was it was more like I think they said 120 million and everything and I'm just like that's such a huge number. <laughs> that's so much money. That do you really want to take that loss? I mean, like, it's so much mo- It's so much money. And I want to talk about some other movies that are, could be on the table. Sorry, it's early for me as of recording this. So I need the I need the caffeine so I can get pumped. Okay, so it says Warner Brothers confirms filming, which they put out a statement, which we'll which we'll look at that in a minute. Um, confirms filming uh, a film starring starring Leslie Grace as Barbara Gordon, Michael Keaton, J.K. Uh, K- uh, Simmons, and Brendan Fraser won't Frazier won't be ever uh be released won't be ever be released Matthew Linder Reed so it says okay so the previously announced Batgirl uh film starring in the heights actor Leslie Grace Michael Keaton and Brendan Fraser will not be released at all which is so crazy to me we'll talk about that also in a minute uh, Warner Brothers Discovery has unexpectedly announced, despite shooting already being completed and the film being in post production, like and where when they, when they say post production, from what I've been reading online, it's like it was like I'm right about to cross the finish line. Post production. That's how. That's how like how uh, much done they have. Um, and I do feel bad for the people involved in this. I love Brendan Fraser. I, I I think that he he's so nice and everything. And I love Michael Keaton and Leslie Grace. I mean, I only seen her in the Heights. Uh, she did okay. She wasn't my top choice for Bad Girl. Um, I thought Zoe Deutsch should have got it, but you know, should have, could have, would have. Can't do anything about it now. Um, it says directed by Ms. Marvel directors uh, Adil Al El Arbi and uh, Bilal Fala. Um, which I, they did bad boys for life also. And I just have to say, I love their bad boys for life. I thought it was so good. It was a great addition to the, the movie. It was a great, you know, if they make it just, if they end it there, that's the trilogy. And I think they did a good job, uh, you know, as far as the third movie installment goes, um, Ms. Marvel. Now I didn't really care for Ms. Marvel an overwhelming amount, but, and it didn't, it didn't do well as far as views goes, but it was the most, it was the highest rated MCU uh, TV show. Um, but I just want to say in their defense, their uh, episode of Miss Marvel is the only one that made it onto the Nielsen uh, top 10 charts. It made it at number 10, its first episode. So in their defense, you know. So the film was initially greenlit in 2021 as part of a wider move at Warner Brothers to create feature films specifically for the streaming service HBO Max. But the studio confirmed on Tuesday that the film would never get any release, either theatrically or on HBO Max. Uh, it uh, declined to provide further comment, and they 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 have since put out a statement. But I just want to say real quick before um um as far as them saying um any release either theatrical or on HBO Max. Now, that does not mean this movie will never come out. Uh, they're in the, now, for all you youngsters out there, you don't know, but uh, there you there was this move, this Fantastic Four movie that was made, and it was made for, I believe, a million dollars because uh, the studio at the time, they had to, they had to create a, 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 a Fantastic Four movie or it wouldn't they wouldn't be able to keep the uh, the rights to fantastic four so they made this cheap million dollar fantastic four movie and it's in all honesty the story isn't bad it's just so bad because it's so cheap like it's like one of those saturday morning made for saturday morning kind of like power rangers kind of movie um 
but this story isn't that half bad. It's actually, it's like if you, if you, you, and you can, you can go. And I, it made its rounds. Like I first watched it because I bought it on DVD at a con. Um, you, you, if you go, if you, uh, if you were, you know, younger like me in the nineties and stuff, you could find it on uh, DVD or VHS. Uh, and, uh, you could, you could find it. So it's not like it was impossible. Nowadays, you can just probably just download it, uh, you know, sail those pirate seas and find it and everything. All right. So it says Batgirl was to have Keaton reprise his role as Batman alongside Grace as the titular hero, Barbara Gordon, J.K. Simmons as Barbara's father, Commissioner Gordon, and Fraser as the villain Firefly, which would have been cool. Um, I love Brendan Fraser. I, I feel bad for him because, you know, he's. I feel, I feel like he's trying to have a comeback and it's not working. So it says the Hollywood Reporter said Batgirl's budget was a factor in the decision having risen to nearly 90 million due to the cost related to it being shot during the COVID-19 pandemic. While the budget is lower than the average DC superhero film, it was reportedly decided that it did not have the spectacle that audiences have come to expect from the DC fair and would not recoup its losses from being released. Now, I just have to say, you know what gets me about this is, and, and maybe it's just me, maybe I'm not, you know, business savvy enough you know but i mean i just go that's so much money and you're taking that is 90 million dollars nothing to you that you're just taking a hit i just don't i just don't understand that concept like and maybe it's just me you know i'm not i don't know anything about this stuff as far as like because i you know they'd have to do a marketing like they'd have to finish it uh, from what i understand there was some visual effects stuff that wasn't done i get that and then um I and then you know they'd have to market it, but I just go, you can't put a small market. To, like I, if it was me, I would just do maybe one trailer, and I just be like, you can, and then that trailer it would end with, you can buy it on this date on this, and then it will release on you know Discovery Plus on this date or HBO Max, which it sounds like HBO Max is gonna go bye bye and everything, but that's what I would do. I just be like, that's where it's going, that's where it is, and uh, you know. And we're just going to chalk this up to and, and you know, maybe they can make it back. I'd, I'd pay for it, you know, um, you know, if they put it out there, I, I, I've bought worse movies. I'm just curious to how bad it was, because uh, well, let me read some more of this anyway. So um, uh, let's see. However, the New York Post, which broke the story on Tuesday, cited an unnamed source who said that the budget had actually exceeded 100 million and that the film had performed so poorly during early test screenings that Warner Brothers decided to cut its losses. And they think Unspeakable Black Girl is going to be irredeemable, the source told the New York Post, which is so sad. I mean, irredeemable i wonder how bad this was and from from what i've seen slash read online you know all these scoopers i have no access to any of this but from what i've seen david zaslav saw it and he was just like this is horrible there's no way we're releasing this is just bad and then from other sources you know the directors they didn't have a choice it was the script and i guess it was mandated uh by um uh, 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 Sarnoff, uh, what's her face? Uh, Sue Sarnoff, mm, the Sarnoff lady. I guess she mandated, you know, what had to be in there, uh, as far as uh, the, you know, movies go. And like, I guess her, she was the like Leslie Grace, cause, you know, it needs to be a, a woman of color kind of thing. And I just go, well, you know, cause I'm sorry, Zoe Deutsch, she was on the short list and she was the best actress in that list from, from what I've seen from all the, the ladies that were in that short list. Anyways. Um, so it says, uh, okay, uh, so here, Justin Kroll, a minute after this story posted, got a call from a rival studio exec who was floored by move, uh, worked in this town for three decades, and this is some unprecedented uh, shit right here. Um, that's so crazy, uh, you know. Um, let's see. The decision means the film ranks among the most expensive canceled cinematic projects ever. Um, yeah, there have been there. Th that's the thing. This has happened before because um, I, I, I can't think of any movies off the top of my head. There was there was one movie about it was like uh, or a, maybe it was a TV show. You know, what, never mind, because I can't remember. It doesn't matter. OK. 
Uh, okay, so the move comes amid the change in leadership since Warner Brothers merged with Discovery in May 2021. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff, who recently oversaw uh, 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 cuts at CNN, including shutting down its 300 million sur uh, streaming service, CNN Plus, yeah, he, after one month, one month after launch, is reportedly uh, prioritizing cost cutting and refocusing the studio on theatrical films over streaming projects, which I do agree that they should focus on feature films. But at the same time, I just go again, so much money spent. You don't want to try to recoup any of that, any of that. I, I, I just, uh, maybe it's just because I'm such like, I just don't spend money willy nilly. I'm like budget. And then, you know, um, you know, if, if you know, if I there was a chance to get any many money back, uh, you know, after spending so much, I would I would take a chance on it, you know. Um, okay, so here's here's the part where it gets good. Writing and variety, Adam B. Very, Brent Lang, no, and Brent Lang noted that the decision to cancel Batgirl entirely would allow the studio to take a tax write down, citing sources who said it was seen initially as the most financially sound way to recoup the cost, at least on an accountant's ledger so they were they'll they'll do a tax write down and they, they i don't think they'll get back all their money but if they do they cannot release this like legally uh so it's just very crazy uh yeah that's so crazy man anyways Several shows, including Full Frontal with Samantha B, the last OJ, which that show's not very good. Like I like Samantha B, but she's not funny. Uh, the last OG. Um, I, you know, what's his face? Um, oh, what is his name? I can't think. I love him. He's great. He's so funny. And Chad, never seen Chad, have been canceled since Warner Brothers Discovery merger. While a DC Comics film of the Wonder Twins that was in development was also been canned, which I mean, the Wonder Twins was different. They hadn't even kind of worked on that at all. Um, but, you know, I, uh, you know, I so I get that portion of the program. Um, I just I just go, uh, you know, well, what else is next? Um, which I want to talk about in just two seconds. So first off, they, they did put out a statement since then. This is their statement. It says, the decision to not release Batgirl reflects our leadership's strategic shift as it relates to the DC Universe and HBO Max. Leslie Grace is an incredibly talented actor, and this decision is not a reflection of her performance. We are incredibly grateful to the filmmakers of Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Haunt, because that also got canceled, and their respective casts, and we hope to collaborate with everyone again in the near future. So they, so they released that statement because they had to, because people were saying this was racism. But that makes me go, where does this go in the future? Now, the Flash movie is is also one of those movies that's been told that everybody's like, oh, you should just not release it. And I go, no, 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 release it. I want to see it. <laughs> the same thing with this Batgirl. I want to see this Batgirl movie now. Now I want to see what's so bad about it, you know? Um, and I just, you know, I just, it's so crazy. Sorry. <sighs> it's early for me. And so... So, and then um, YouTuber Grace Randolph, she put out a theory, a theory. So this was her theory. I just did, I just covered it, but apparently, okay, so Ben Affleck is coming back to do a, a cameo in Batman, or in Aquaman 2, as Batman. Originally, this scene was going to be Michael Keaton. This is like a post credit scene or whatever. And it was originally going to be Michael Keaton's Batman. But because The Flash was not released this year, because it was supposed to come out in like, what? What was it? June, July? I can't remember off the top of my head. Because it got pushed back so far, and now it's like, when is it coming out? If it's coming out. Um, and Michael, that was supposed to uh, introduce Michael Keaton's Batman to this universe, including uh, this Batgirl. But he was going to have a small cameo in Aquaman 2, you know, because they were setting him up as the Nick Fury of this, this DC universe or DCE universe. So instead of uh, because they were like, well, this I and from, you know, they're like this, this, this scene is kind of crucial to the movie, yada, yada, going forward and everything not going forward now. So they so they had Ben Affleck come back and film the scene with his Batman instead of Michael Keaton's Batman. Now, Grace Randolph put out there, maybe he did this because in the Flash movie, that was going to be his last uh, performance as Batman. 
he was going to do his scene as Batman and he was going to, that was like his goodbye to the fans as Batman and his goodbye to the character. So she put out a theory. It's and this is, she, she said this, she's nothing like a contact or whatever. And I'm, and, and some other people have said some things that I want to talk about. Um, but she said that, um, what if this new cameo in Aquaman 2 is his goodbye now that the Flash might be canceled? You know, like he got the word that the Flash was going to get canceled. So they're like, would you mind doing this uh, cameo in this movie and everything? And he and him being, you know, a good guy, he said, sure, yeah, I'll do it. Now, also, uh, you know, there was a nerd Roddick put out there that uh, it was not the decision of the the filmmakers to cast Leslie uh, a Grace or to have the quote unquote woke stuff in the script. It just was in there and they just didn't have, they just wanted to film, a, 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 you know, the movie or whatever. And they just, you know, did with what they, they had. Um, again, I don't know any about this. And then there, they said there was more stuff that they could tell, but not right now and everything, which I'm all like, Ooh, spill the tea sis. Um, but I, I just go, I don't like, I don't know if this is a bad idea. Oh, and then there was also some plot leaks. Like, I guess, she her she dresses up as Batman for a Halloween costume and then saves or stops some terrorists. And then she decides she's going to do this. And that Batman scenes, he was only in five scenes, I guess. Um, oh, no, no. He was only in a couple of scenes. And one of them was to tell Leslie Grace not to do this. And then another one was to jump off of the building and they they go like floating through the woods or whatever. Uh, or through, through the woods, through the city or whatnot, through like the skyscrapers. Um, but um, again, I don't know all this. A lot of this is from Reddit and stuff and like from other, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that. So it's very, it's all very, very interesting, but so crazy. This is, this is something that just usually doesn't happen. Usually no matter, that's why, um, and, and I'm curious to see like what was in contracts because people might sue over this. That's what happened with, for instance, um, like New Mutants. That was, that was possibly going to get shelled, but then they're like, no, you have to release it and it has to be a theatrical release, not an option. Um, and it's also happened with Warner Brothers during the pandemic. You know, they released it on HBO Max and a lot of the actors got upset because they're, hey, what about our bonuses? Because, you know, they usually sign bone uh, uh, stuff in their contracts where they get bonuses saying like, hey, if this movie breaches opening weekend, $100 million, I'm throwing this all out there, then we I get a bonus for that and everything. And so they paid off all these actors and directors for their bonuses. You know, like for instance, they played Gal Gadot and uh, Patty Jenkins for Wonder Woman 1984 because uh, Patty Jenkins was all like upset that it was going to HBO Max. She's like, you need to see it in the theater. And it's like, no, I don't, I didn't need to see this movie at all. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is so interesting and so not heard of. I, I And again, I'm curious to see if they'll pay off these actors and directors to, you know, have them not be like, this is some nonsense or whatever. And, you know, will they say anything because they want to work with this studio again? Who knows? Who knows? All I know is this is just crazy. Oh, and a lot of people are saying like, oh, this is because they were going to bring back the Snyderverse. They're, they're, I don't think they're going to bring back the Snyderverse. I'm, I'm not saying that because I'm against the Snyderverse. I'm just saying that's because that's what I, I think is going to happen. You know, I think that Ben Affleck coming back, I think that I I, I do think that that's just him being a, a good guy and playing ball and everything uh, because he does want to work with Warner Brothers again. He just doesn't want to do Batman anymore. Um, but I don't think that going forward, I don't think they're going to bring back Henry Cavill as Superman. Bummer. I'm not I'm not saying they shouldn't. I, in fact, I do think they should bring back Henry Cavill, but I'm just saying I don't think they're going to. I think that the Aquaman, I think that Black Adam and Shazam will be released this year, and then Aquaman next year, and then The Flash is up in the air. I don't know if they're going to release it, especially now. But that's a $200 million loss if they do. Plus, well, I don't know what they did if they spent more than that. They probably did. But that's so much money right there. That's that's a loss. I don't understand if they do that. I don't understand it. That's so much money. Give that money to me. Yeah, take the loss and give it to me. I'll take it. All right, because those are my thoughts. Sorry, I went on lengthy there for with my with my with my comments and stuff. But tell me, what do you guys think about this? Do you think this is crazy, or do you think this is totally understandable and you get it and everything? Um, or are you like me and you're just like, man, this is just so much money to lose out on that you're just like, what? 
what and everything. It's so crazy. All right, tell me what you guys think. Uh, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind. If you know my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next uh, video. You guys have a good day. Bye.